Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Ben, and today we're going to be asking how that group of terrorists, I mean freedom fighters, that they call the Rebel Alliance, acquired all their ships. Some of the ships that we'll talk about are actual Rebel ships, and some just have an association with the Alliance. So let's get started. The Y-Wing. Y-Wings were already in use by the Republic during the Clone Wars, but after the Republic turned into the Empire, they decided to discontinue use of the Y-Wing and go with the TIE line of fighters and bombers instead. But Conseil still had inventory and they needed buyers for their ships. So they started selling to various parties, ships found their way into pirate hands and eventually to the Rebellion. You see a difference in how the Y-Wings look during the Clone Wars and in service with the Rebel Alliance, because Rebel engineers found it a hassle to reinstall the hull plating after working on the ships, so they just left it off, except for the cockpit. That's why you see those skeleton-like ships in the Battle of Yavin. You just can't get the staff these days. Hammerhead Corvette the Hammerhead Corvette is based off an ancient design of Starship. We know that these ships were in service of the Royal Orlanian Navy. Princess Leia smuggled three of these ships to the Rebel Alliance under the guise of a humanitarian operation, delivering supplies to Lothal. During the mission, Rebels stole the ships as planned and added them to their fleet. These three ships were referred to as P-1, P-2, and P-3, and you can see them in the Rebels TV series. Quasar Fire Class Carrier Cruiser the Quasar Fire Class Cruiser Carrier was a large, triangular-shaped Imperial ship with TIE fighter hangars in its belly. It would serve as a base of operations in orbit of occupied worlds. The Rebels acquired one of these ships that was orbiting Ryloth, an occupied planet. The ship was stolen by Ezra, Kanan, Hera and Co. with the help of Hera's father, Cham, of the Free Ryloth Movement. Cham first wanted to destroy the ship to send a rallying call to Ryloth-based rebels, but was persuaded otherwise during the mission. The ship later became the flagship of Phoenix Squadron and housed rebel A-Wings. Speaking of A-Wings, the A-Wing. The A-Wing was designed in secret after the Battle of Yavin, when the rebels felt the need for a fighter that could match the TIE fighter's speed. Three TIE fighters did almost end Luke's trench run that destroyed the Death Star. So Rebel General Jan Didona turned to Walex Blissix, an ex-Quat Systems engineering starship designer, to design a new ship. Unfortunately, the destruction of the first Death Star led to Imperial suppressions on many worlds, so funding for the project wasn't easy to come by. But Didona and Blissix pushed on with a smaller budget. Many of the original A-Wings were assembled by hand. They used existing components pushed beyond their specifications, and even used materials such as wood in the cockpits. But the A-Wing did end up being faster than the TIE interceptors flying at the time, despite the extra weight of a hyperdrive and shield generators. Just FYI, the information about the A-Wing is legends, there's not much cannon to go on. The X-Wing. I'm not going to go into that much detail about the X-Wing because we have another video on it, but basically, this is a starfighter that a company called Incom was designing for the Republic. After the Republic became the Empire, they opted for the TIE Fighter instead. Incom then started sympathizing with the Rebels' cause and helped them design and build the starfighter in secret. We'll put our other video at the end for you guys to check out. Tantive 4 this ship was used as a mobile headquarters by Bail Organa, Leia's adopted father during his time as a senator. It was later used by Leia on secret missions, often to aid the rebellion. On one such mission, Leia was taking this ship to Tatooine to meet Obi-Wan Kenobi, but then the Battle of Scarif broke out. And the Tantive IV was forced to take the Death Star plans and escape, with an Imperial Star Destroyer in pursuit. It was later captured, but the plans were taken by C-3PO and R2-D2 in an escape pod. According to legends, the Empire covered up the capture of the Tantive IV, claiming in their propaganda that the ship had been destroyed in an asteroid storm. The Millennium Falcon The Millennium Falcon was a light freighter designed by Corillian Engineering. Its original function was pushing cargo containers around orbital freight yards. That's why it had the two-pronged fork at the front. It was a docking system for cargo pods. The ship was later acquired by Lando Calrissian, who lost it to Han Solo in a game of Sabacc. It's a card game, kind of like a Star Wars version of poker. Han did his own modifications to the ship and it ended up being twice as fast as an Imperial Star Destroyer, with a 0.5 hyperdrive rating. 
Although it wasn't a ship owned by the Rebel Alliance, Han did fly it on several missions with the Rebels, including the Battle of Yavin, the escape from Hoth, and it was flown by its previous owner Lando in the Battle of Endor. After marrying Princess Leia, Han installed a kitchen on the Falcon as a wedding present for her. I'm sure she was really pleased with that. Oh, Han, no wonder your marriage didn't last that long. The ship was later stolen by Han, and after that stolen several times until it ended up in the hands of Anchor Plot on Jakku, which it was then stolen by Rey and stolen back by Han, and then ended up in the hands of Rey when Han was killed by his own son, and Rey flew it to Anakto to meet Luke Skywalker. So guys, what do you think about all that? Leave a comment with your favorite rebel vessel in the comment section below. I know there are some that we didn't cover, like Mon Calamari ships, those medical frigates. We have talked about those in previous videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please subscribe. And remember, if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.